Greetings. Welcome to ITR Live. I'm your host, Chris Hagenau, and we are back here in Studio 130 for another fun-filled, action-packed episode of the Gold Standard, <laughs> an Iowa political podcast. It's John Hendrickson and myself here today, and we have some rapid reaction, as rapid as it can be at, you know, the next morning, uh, from the Iowa caucuses last night. So, Johnny, you ready? I am, yeah. Yeah, I know. You, this uh, is exciting. Yeah, no, you... <laughs> This it's it's second only to rushing home from church and watching the McLaughlin group yes, on Sunday morning right. is is, uh, <laughs> yeah. is election day for yeah. for John and I, but um, we okay well I we might have a lot to cover we might not I you know it's at the end of the day the results kind of are what they are but mm-hmm. um, you know maybe we can talk a little bit about you know what happened behind the scenes a little bit but how did things go at your caucus location. You know, I, I think they went well, and uh, um, we had, I thought, a fairly large turnout. In fact, um, I, I was recruited in the parking lot to help with registration because yeah. uh, they needed help, and that was fine. And so it was, actu- it was actually fun. I enjoyed it. And so I, uh, as I was helping to register people and sign people in, I got to meet some neighbors that I, that yeah. I had never met before. And, and so that was, a, that was a fun. And then fun part of it and then uh working with some of the people I did I made some new friends so I you know that's cool. one of the under uh reported neat things about the caucus it's your neighbors yes yeah and you know you'll meet you kind of know who some of the folks are that are going to be there if you've lived there a while then others are like wow I didn't expect to see them here and and uh you know, chat with some folks I mean I <laughs> had a conversation with one of my neighbors down the street about you know, they're Christmas lights. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, cause we had, ex- you know, yeah. like traded messages like, Hey, who did your Christmas lights? And, and so we, you know, it's like those kinds of conversations, yes. right? Yeah. You don't, you don't have those when you vote in a, yeah. a primary or general election, you talk with your neighbors, but and then I, I, I thought it was funny because the, mainly the national media was making a big deal with the cold weather. And, and I saw at least, um, mm-hmm. several people that, uh, that had shorts on really at my caucus. So, uh, which I thought was interesting, you know, just kind of like a long sleeve shirt and shorts, and well, that's impressive. So yeah, well, were they younger? No, no, these really? were uh, middle aged, and uh, one guy looked like he was in his fifties. Huh. I mean, uh, well, that's more more power to him. So I was, I was bundled. Was. <laughs> um, I you know I felt like we had a pretty good turnout at my precinct location as well. Uh, you know, rapidly growing suburban, you know. Uh, two precincts together but we had i don't know 150 in mine and maybe 200 in the other one which Mm -hmm. i thought was pretty good similar to a little bit more than 2020 which was not really competitive but if you remember uh, still try to turn folks out for that one Mm -hmm. but i thought that that was the big question i think going in is who would actually show up um, with the cold and uh, i know that one of the campaigns was thinking maybe it would be 130,000 would be the total turnout statewide. The record in 2016 was 187,000 statewide. And then last night was 110. So I think it clearly was uh, down mm-hmm. a lot. And, and I don't know if that's all the cold or if folks, you know, we talked about in the last podcast, yeah. the Des Moines Register's Iowa poll that showed mm-hmm. and other polls that showed uh, Donald Trump with a with a big lead. If folks just decided, you know what, this is already mm-hmm. in the bag. I, I don't need to participate. So I don't know, but yeah. it was it was definitely statewide lower turnout. Yes, yeah. Um, so I don't know the what other, to make of that so much. But the other thing I I noticed, and uh, this would be my, I was trying to think. I think it, this was my third, third or fourth presidential caucus, and um, this one to me seemed like people were more enthusiastic to be there than, than previous ones. And maybe that's just, and because there was, there was people and I, I could, I could see people, uh, especially for Trump, DeSantis, Haley and Vivek mm-hmm. all had very energetic supporters there. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that was kind of, in, that was kind of fun to see. We, I, I was a little bit surprised. We did not have anyone speak for Nikki Haley and my, uh, location. We had two speakers for Trump, two speakers for DeSantis, and a speaker for Vivek. Okay. Yeah. But no one, um, which I I thought was interesting. We had Congressman Mike Collins from Georgia. 
was a surrogate that came for Trump at mine. Did you have anybody like that? We did. We had it, and I, I should have looked his name up, and I, for, I forget, but he was a congressman from Florida. Okay. That spoke on behalf yeah. of, uh, of, uh, of the Trump campaign. Yeah, there was the one that would have been, I, I don't remember where it was at, um, but it, Nikki Haley went and spoke at, I think it was a Des Moines precinct, and then immediately after was Donald Trump Jr. Wow. And I apparently didn't hold back yeah. afterwards. So that would be fun yes, if you could yeah. have those kind of fireworks yes, and those yeah. kind of speakers. And, and some locations have tried to, they didn't, it didn't seem like Polk and Dallas County at least did it as much as they had in the past. They're trying to draw as many precincts into one kind of super site location mm-hmm. and draw that kind of activity. It really was seemed much more spread out, which I think is better yeah. for that kind of yes, neighborhood yeah. idea. So I, I'd be curious what some folks, um, experiences were with that across the state um, of getting, you know, a lot of people around here. Look here in central Iowa, we get a lot more of the candidates, right? Because they want to get to their victory party. And so if you're at a, a caucus location, typically a suburban caucus site, you have a pretty good chance of getting, getting a pretty good surrogate at your, yes, at your location. So, yeah. um, So another thing that I think, we, we can recap the actual results. I think most of our listeners at this point probably probably know what happened, but Donald Trump with 51% of the vote, Ron DeSantis in second at 21%, Nikki Haley third at 19 That actually seems to be fairly in line with the public polling. Would you agree with that, that we saw? I mean, we, we have no problem trashing yes, the, yeah. the polling. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the Des Moines Register got second and third flipped, but mm-hmm. it's not really that far off, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I was actually, uh, I, I don't want to say I was surprised, but my, my prediction was off big time. Yeah. And I, I thought the polls would be more wrong for yeah. some reason. And I actually, and I don't know if I shared this on this program, but I know I shared it with you, yeah. but I, I actually thought DeSantis would pull off a victory. You were you were on record here in the yes. office. I will vouch for that. Yes. that. You thought that, and you'd been saying that for a long time, yeah. that you thought yeah. that Ron DeSantis would ultimately win the Iowa caucus. Yeah, and I, I really did. And and I and it wasn't any special reasoning I had. I just thought because of the the ground game that he had and and the support he had among the evangelical community that that it would carry him. And and I uh, Fox had done some exit polling. Mm-hmm. And and demonstrated that fifty five percent of uh, evangelicals had supported uh, former President Trump. It is always I, I'm a broken record on this, but in polling, <clears throat> how you define evangelical? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, because I think that there's a lot of people that are self identified evangelical Christians for whom it's not. It's a little bit more, and not to denigrate anyone's faith or anything, mm-hmm. but it's a little more of a cultural identity kind of thing than it is an active. If you if you break that down by folks that, if you ask them instead of, do you consider yourself an evangelical Christian, ask them how often do you go to services. Mm-hmm. Those You get different numbers off of that, yes, right? Anyway, yeah, absolutely. The point yeah. being is that if you just ask, do you identify as Christian, you get a different subset of that population. Um it was. I, I saw some breakdowns of where uh, Ron DeSantis did well. Uh, it was the northern suburbs of Des Moines, primarily. So Ankeny Johnston, he did very well in, and I think he did pretty well in my area. Although still um, didn't quite. He was tied for first in mine, but and then also Pella and Sioux County, Orange City. Okay, yeah, which are conservative strongholds, mm-hmm. but. Um, probably a more of what you'd classically think of an evangelical voter. So those Dutch communities that yeah. are very Republican and the north suburbs of Des Moines, those were the DeSantis strongholds. I'd be interested uh, kind of to read more about why that is, what's the common thread between those. Although I, there's a lot of Pella and <laughs> Sioux County transplants that live in the yes, north yeah. and west suburbs of Des Moines. And those but, are, would it be fair to say those are the same folks that kind of supported Cruz in 2016. Yep, yep that's exactly yeah. right. It's, uh, um, if you think about, maybe it's uh, Bob Vanderplatz's endorsement, mm-hmm. and, 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 and he is from Sioux County and has strong ties to, to that community. Um, anyway, so I, I thought that was interesting. Trump obviously did well statewide, not as well in maybe the suburban areas. He actually finished in third place in my precinct. Um, 
so I don't know any of that surprises me. I mean, that, that yeah. kind of is in line with how he's performed in the past. So mm-hmm. any other surprise? I, I, there was I, one other one, though, that I thought was really interesting, John, and I'm sorry, no. is the age difference. Yes. So you yeah. hear a lot about the educational breakdown or d- gender breakdown or whatever mm-hmm. is that uh, folks 65 and older voted overwhelmingly for Donald Trump. Folks under the age of 30 actually voted for Governor DeSantis. Uh, there's a real age breakdown in political affinity within the Republican Party. So, yeah, for whatever that's worth, I I, I noticed that one. Yeah, and and same with uh, um, you know, uh, and this is this is going back to the the Fox exit polling, but uh, Trump was very strong with people without a college degree, whereas uh, uh, DeSantis and Haley tended to get more of their support from people with college degrees. Uh, people. Identified as very conservative, uh, tended to support Trump. People who supported the Make America Great agenda, or MAGA agenda, tended to go to Trump, obviously. And then uh, Trump was very strong with uh, rural yeah. caucus goers. Yeah. And uh, what the other interesting thing is, I just saw this before we came on, is Johnson County. Uh, Johnson County uh, uh, is the only one that Trump lost. And uh, what? And according to Fox, this is Fox News, that Haley got 1,271 votes in Johnson County, and Trump got 1,270 votes. Hmm. So Haley won by one vote, if if Fox News is accurate yeah. in their reporting, which is kind of interesting. But you know, it, I I'm guessing from what I heard last night, Haley was doing strong in the college towns, yeah, uh, that, that, that Iowa City sense. and Ames. Um, I saw one tweet from a reporter that was at a, a South Grand here in Des Moines <laughs> location, which South Grand, if you're not from the Des Moines area, is the old money, uh, historic mansions. Uh, it's very, very liberal, but yet, you know, the, obviously there's still some Republicans mm-hmm. live down there. That went overwhelmingly for Nikki Haley as well. So, <laughs> and it, and it, but yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I think that makes sense. None of that really surprises me. Um, it's my perspective is that the Nikki Haley voters in my precinct were younger and uh, probably were the, the bulk of the new registrations, Mm -hmm. the folks that came in and registered to vote Republican on that night. I, I don't, I I think the, the, the temptation is to immediately say that those were Democrats or independents that flipped just to vote for her in the caucus. And that may be, I don't know that it's entirely true. I mean, I think Nikki Haley resonated with the younger voter. And so maybe she genuinely uh, uh, turned out some new folks. That's what the Des Moines Register's poll would have indicated. Yes. You know, as much as we uh, kind of poked fun at that. So I don't know, but there were new people. And, and, and at the end of the day, the, the party or the conservative movement does need to be about turning new people out. Yes. So we can't, um, we can't uh, just dismiss that altogether. Um, okay, pop quiz. We have not talked about this. We didn't prep this. What was Vivek Ramaswamy's best county in Iowa? You know, I don't know. <laughs> That's uh, You could make an educated guess. I, I would say it. Um, you may not even know the name of the county, which isn't fair. I, I'll, I'll just, geographically, I'll, I'll guess it's probably out west. Crawford County. Okay, well, no, well I, it's Steve I, King t- territory. Is it okay? Yeah. And as Steve King did endorse Vivek yes, yeah. uh, relatively late, but that was, yeah, he finished in second place with 24% of the vote in Crawford County. Um, okay, good. I want to transition just a little bit. I One of the traditional stories you hear on some of this is like a winners and losers. And mm-hmm. I, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about winners and losers, the Iowa caucus, because that is one of my frustrations is that um, we need to be able to turn the page as, the conservative movement in Iowa after the caucus. We have, you and I both have friends in, in every corner of this campaign, right? Yes, yeah, I mean, yeah. I had good friends that were Haley supporters, DeSantis supporters, Trump supporters, Vivek, all over. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we've typically been able to, after the caucuses are over, turn the page and move on and come together. Not always, but hopefully. So I don't want to, I don't want to spend time like trying to identify who, who came up short because we're all kind of in this for the win. Uh, afterwards, but there were definitely some winners. Yes, and I yeah. do. I do want to spend a little bit of time with that. Um, so at the 
Trump victory speech last night. He had kind of the the core team on stage. Did you see this? Did I you did, watch yes, any yeah. of this? Yep. Um, and a lot of them were sort of, uh, look, he had uh, Eric Trump, Don Jr. on stage with him, some staffers, and some Iowa folks as well. Mm-hmm. So um, going through that, um, what were your takeaways? Did you watch the whole speech? Because I didn't watch the whole speech. I did. I watched it this morning. Okay. Uh, I Unfortunately, I still do not have internet or cable at home because of Mediacom's wonderful service. So how did uh, you watch anything? Well, I, I, I waited till... Um, I, I tried to watch as much as I could on my phone. Oh, okay. And then uh, this morning when I came in, I came in early to, and I watched oh, okay. uh, archive footage from C-SPAN of, it, of some of the speeches. But that's most mornings, isn't it? Yes. You yeah. come in early and <laughs> yes, watch archive yeah. C-SPAN. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Just like, what was any different about today? <laughs> that's right. But, okay. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we're not kidding, folks. Yeah. We really aren't. <laughs> So anyway, so you watch the Trump speech. Yes, yeah. And yeah. and what do you, what were the big takeaways from that? Well, I, I think one takeaway was he, he did call for, um, in a sense, unity. He, which he I really did. Was, that was my, yes. uh, I watched the first five or ten minutes. That was immediately yeah. my thought is he, he wants to turn the page. Yeah. And he also is, uh, and one thing I, which I, I, I think he's done very well so far is he's, 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 uh, whether you agree or not, he stayed on message of, of focusing on, the problems with the current administration. And so he didn't necessarily uh, lash out at any of the, mm-hmm. his opponents in the Republican party. He called for unity. You know, we need to, the, the mm-hmm. real objective is to win this election and to, to get the Democrats out of power. And then he reminded the, uh, the audience there that, you know, uh, drill baby drill and secure mm-hmm. the border is top priorities. Well, um, and those resonate with, yeah. with, um, with Republican voters. I did see he told Iowans that uh, they could buy larger tractors and more land. That seemed to be a, yes, a recurring yeah, theme there, yeah. too. So I, <laughs> you get right on that, John, all right? Go out to buy yourself a bigger. Yes, car. yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, I don't oh. know. I mean, that seems to be a little bit of, we're not all farmers here in Iowa, yeah. Mr. President, but um, maybe you could step up to three-quarter ton pickup or something if you wanted to. That's John, right. With yeah. that, I don't know if that would satisfy yeah, I, the president. Yeah, there's there, that ranch king that, that yeah, Ford makes yeah, is kind of nice. Yeah, but. That, you'd look good behind the wheel of that for sure. Um, but, yeah, definitely unifying. So the some of the Iowans that he had on stage with him, I think these folks, clearly, if you pick a, pick a horse and the horse wins, you come out a winner, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one who got special... Uh, Consideration was Attorney General Brenna Byrd, yes, who made a yeah. very, not early on, but I think it was late summer or so, very public endorsement of Trump and was on stage with him there. And uh, she certainly uh, comes out a big winner in this uh, mm-hmm. to, to get President Trump's um, favor on this. Um, Trump had a lot of really nice things to say about Senator Brad's on. Yes. Yeah. And, and I'm watching this and I think I've heard this before, but I had forgotten about this, that Trump credits Brad's on of being the first person to endorse him in the entire country. In the entire country. Yeah. yeah. Even before he announced his official run for president. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I look, I, I know Brad well and, and it's authentic. He, yeah, he just has been there and Brad is very loyal and, He's just, he's never wavered Mm -hmm. like Trump from the beginning. And he's never, never moved off of that. So um, kudos to, to Brad's on Um, state representative, Bobby Kaufman got uh, has also has been a very consistent Trump supporter going back to, I think 16, I'm not sure, but um, house ways and means chairman, someone we work with uh, on our issues, but um, he took a very active role in the campaign and, and the president had some very nice things to say about his, uh, him and his dad as well, state party chairman, Jeff Kaufman and their professionalism and, and their, their ability. And I think that's shown through. So obviously a uh, big winner last night. Now this is the last one is the one I think got the biggest applause in the room. I could be mistaken, but it was listen. And that is my good friend, uh, former uh, acting attorney general, Matt Whitaker. Yes. Yeah. And of all those mentioned, um, I thought Matt got the biggest applause. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he has, look, uh, Matt's got a following yes. among Iowa Republicans. And I, I honestly don't know whether Matt ends up, uh, running for something again in Iowa, but I, I think he's got, you want to talk about winners from last night. I think Matt has, if he would decide to do that, 
um, certainly has a good foundation to decide to do something like that in the future. Yeah. Would you agree with that? I, I, absolutely. And he, he's been, uh, I mean, very instrumental on the campaign trail for President Trump. I yes. mean, and delivering speech after speech and, and, uh, uh, and, and really um, is very thorough on the issues. Yeah. And I, mean, I think, too, that folks, look, if you know Matt, you see him. He does Fox News hits, other, you know, other cable news mm-hmm. hits. He's, he's a frequent contributor on those. But Matt is part of the national Trump operation. Yes. So these yeah. other folks have been helpful in Iowa, not mm-hmm. to diminish their role at all. But Matt is legitimately across the country for President Trump and the America First movement and has been for years, since, frankly, since the president left office. So um, is it, and I'm still in touch with Matt, but he is very much connected with that entire campaign operation. Um, and I don't know if if what his role is going forward, but clearly I think Matt Whitaker is a big winner from the caucuses last night. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, so there was one piece that was a little bit, I guess, transitioning again, that the DeSantis team specifically uh, was talking about was how early the race was called. Did you see this as well? I did, yeah. In fact, I I, I was surprised because, um, you know, we had just, in, in, in my caucus, we had just uh, finished everyone putting their ballots in the, yeah. in the box. And uh, I just happened to look at my phone, and all of a sudden I had uh, emails from uh, uh, newspapers that I subscribed to all yeah. alerts uh, predicting, you know, basically saying Trump won. And yeah. I, just, it, I just thought, how could this be? Yeah. Uh, it was that quick. They only had just a small handful of locations. Here's the difference. I, look, we often have, when you on regular elections, right after the polls close, you get a couple of results in and you can declare a state, right? Mm-hmm. That's fair. If you're going to have a big win and you know it, you can do that because the polls are closed, right? And the media is very clear about this. They don't make announcements until it's all done. Well, this is different because there are folks that still had not voted. Yeah. And there's a reason that media outlets wait until after, you know, if you're watching election night results, it's 8 o'clock, polls close. Okay, now we can make a projection. So I think it was, I think it's genuinely was irresponsible for the Associated Press to, to do that. Yeah. Because in mind, we had not voted yet. We were still listening to speeches. Yeah. And so people are here on their phones, have not voted, and they see that there's a winner already. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's a problem. Yes, yeah. And look, I don't know what the magic hour is. I think most Iowans had voted by 8 o'clock mm-hmm. that were out there. But you need to wait until then. Yes. Uh, there was, I saw a couple of reports, and I don't remember where, that there were actually some caucus locations where people just left. Mm. They were in there. They saw that, well, it's already over, so they just turn around and left so that i mean if that's true it clearly did skew the actual results yeah so i think yeah. the, the famous example of this at least in my lifetime was 2000 in florida when florida votes in two different time zones the mm-hmm. panhandles yes in yep. the central yeah they declared it after most had yeah. had won and so was did some of those folks in the panhandle mm-hmm. not show up to vote don't know yeah um don't really want to relitigate the 2000 presidential election yes. right yeah. now yeah. but it does matter. It does impact people's voting behavior. Mm-hmm. And so, look, I, the DeSantis campaign is going to talk about that as being unfair. It didn't, certainly wasn't the margin of victory. Yes, yeah. That's clear. One, two, three, four, those folks, no matter what happened, that was the order of finish. Mm-hmm. But it is something that going forward is we always continue to do this better and, and have trust in the system. So I, that... Yeah. Anyway, that's my take on that. It, it's hard to police the media that way. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, that's the problem. Well, and I know the media is probably going to go too far out of their way to make things easier for Republicans in mm-hmm. general. But yeah. um, no, that's right. I, I think one other thing I want to touch on, I guess, to wrap up, John, is that much has been made in the past about trouble with the caucus mechanically. Famously would have been the Democrats in 2020, mm-hmm. how they just completely fumbled it. That's right, yeah. And not pointing any fingers at that. I tend to be on the side that it was the National Party that screwed that up, not the Iowa, but whatever. Um, and in 2016, there was some trouble counting votes in the on the Republican side. Yes. Uh, was it 16 or was it 12? 
Uh, it, it was, was Santorum. 12, Santorum, yeah, it was Santorum and Romney. And Romney. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was matter because it was just very close. Yes, yeah. So, and I, I think that's a little unfair because it was so close. And at the end of the day, the 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 caucus is really a straw poll. It's mm-hmm. not exact, but this went off without a hitch. Yeah. And so kudos to uh, the Republican Party of Iowa yep. um, for mechanically putting on a very strong operation. I ended up being my precinct chairman at the last minute. Um, everything was very easy to follow. There were document, you know, that a booklet of, yeah. of how to do it. Um, the paperwork was fairly straightforward. It's the same stuff we've been using for years. But uh, there was a reporting app, mm-hmm. worked real slick, and yeah. typed it in, had a central committee member uh, with me there. He it, it took 20 seconds. Yeah. And it uploaded. It was it was slick and all worked. So my my point, John, is that the media would have loved nothing more than to point out just how screwed up everything got. It mm-hmm. wasn't. No. It went off very smoothly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I I uh, I mean just even with the registration process that I was helping with at my caucus, um, it was very smooth. I mean the books were accurate. Uh, mm-hmm. The lists were accurate, and the people that were either changing parties or registering for the first time that went smooth and mm-hmm. and so there's a um a lot of training that went behind yeah. uh this and i think it was they it paid off very well i i think that's right and kudos out there to any of our listeners who stepped up to be precinct chairs yes yeah if you haven't done it before it, you might not have a lot of experience standing up in front of a a, a relatively large group of people some of whom are, you know, your friends and neighbors. Mm-hmm. And that can be a little daunting. Yes. Especially yeah. when you're conducting, it's one thing to stand up and give a speech or a talk in front of somebody. You're actually conducting real official business. That's right. Not to mention real official business that's part of selecting the leader of the free world. Yeah. It, it, it is daunting. And yet people stood up and offered to help and got the job done. And it all went off smoothly. Mm-hmm. So anybody that helped, especially the, the precinct, uh, chairs. We had a lot of volunteers at my precinct. It, it, it all went great. And I think that goes back to the point that you made, John. I think there's a lot of enthusiasm. Yes, I think a yeah. lot of folks want to get involved. And that is one of the early indicators, I think, to look at to the fall mm-hmm. is you know, right now, it seems likely that we're going to see uh, Trump versus Biden again. Don't know yet. We've got a long ways to go, but that's where things are the directionally headed. Yeah. And enthusiasm will will determine a lot of that. Mm-hmm. In Absolutely. 2020, President Biden had a lot of enthusiasm. Yes. Yeah. A lot of it was to defeat Trump, but mm-hmm. he had a lot of enthusiasm. And you could feel that if yeah. you're out and about. Yep. I can tell you from last night in my area and what I picked up from other people's areas, there's a lot of enthusiasm on the enthusiasm that was not there in 2020. Yes. To win, to defeat Joe Biden. Yep. I, I would agree. I mean, he, listening to even people that were not supporting Trump, the same thing. Yeah, uh, we're saying we've we've got to change courses here. Yep. yep. So, so something early to watch. We're going to be tracking that, John. Yeah. So, any closing yeah. thoughts on the well, caucuses? I, yeah, I just want to mention. I knew you uh, would. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> two things. One, one is with Vivek because I, oh, I yeah, listened right. to his. Uh, uh, he suspended his campaign last night, and mm-hmm. so I listened to his speech, which I thought he did very well uh, to his supporters. And and one thing. Uh, I have to say, and, you know, whether one agrees with Vivek or not, I thought he was one of the more original thinkers in this campaign, and I thought he brought out some uh, issues that need to be discussed. But I thought it was interesting. I, I wrote down one of his quotes, and here's what he said to his followers. He said, follow me and take our America First movement to the next level, which he calls America First 2.0. And, I, and, and for me, I think um, there's still a misunderstanding by – people in the media and even some of the elites out there that are still misunderstanding the Trump Vivek type message of why mm-hmm. it's so popular with, with, uh, if you want to call it the Republican base or even just a majority of the, of Americans that, and I think it is that America first message yeah, that is very popular. And it's still something that, uh, you know, the media and a lot of political elites just don't understand yet. Yeah. And, and I think uh, that that's a, a powerful message that that both the former president and Vivek had tapped into um, in, I, in their campaigns. I think that's right. I, 
Vivek brought something very unique to this race. Yes. And whatever, I've talked about it, his ability to communicate the principles of conservatism or America first mm. conservatism and defend it were far beyond anybody else in the race. Yes. Yeah. Just, just truly gifted at that. Yeah. And, and, he, I, and I know some popes had some misgivings about Vivek, about yes, whether, yeah. you know, he just newfound conservatism mm -hmm. or whatever. And maybe those are fair. Yeah. But, man, he was good at it. Yeah. And he sort of reminded me a little bit of, of, of Reagan in, in a certain extent where he wanted to focus on, you know, what does it mean to be an American and sort of rediscovering the spirit of, of the, mm -hmm. you know, the principles of the American Revolution and what it means to be a, a, a citizen and, and, uh, and he struck that chord of, you know, needing to, uh, to think of ourselves as a, as an exceptional nation. Yep. And I, I thought that was very encouraging when he, uh, made those comments on the campaign trail. Well, I, I, I actually don't say this lightly because we have, there's, there's a lot of good future leaders in the conservative movement, Yes. Yep. but I sincerely hope that there is a role, a prominent national role for Vivek Ramaswamy yeah. going forward. Yeah. I think he has got a ton to offer to help lead the country going forward. Yeah. So what, maybe, it doesn't necessarily mean he has to run for president again. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even mean, need, he, mean he needs to run for public office again. Yeah. It, maybe he does. But he's got a, he's got a, a big role to play. I, I agree. Going yeah. Going forward in, yeah. in the country. So, um, no, that that's great. And, uh, yeah. So we'll be tracking that as well. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, John, uh, we, I, for not knowing exactly what we were yes. going to cover today, I think we did pretty well. <laughs> I think so, so too. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We may actually have more to say in this in the future. We're going to need to pivot at some point to the legislative session. Yeah. And what's going on there. A uh, short week. Uh, yes. The, the legislature typically comes in on Monday. They're uh, just now uh, coming in on Tuesday morning because yesterday being an, a federal holiday. That's right, yeah. And the caucuses, folks need to be home in their home districts. So be a short week for the legislature. Probably won't get as much done. But uh, as some of these major bills move through, we're going to be tracking them and, and have more to say in future episodes. So, Absolutely. All righty. Well, thank you, John. Yeah. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, everyone that braved the cold last night to be a part of the, um, the Iowa caucuses. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends, your new friends that you met at the caucuses last night. And with all of that, we will see you next time on ITR Live.